Let's talk, David, and, and all of us, although we musicians don't see most of this, let's talk about some of the visual aspects because this isn't strictly people standing still and uh, singing the words and playing the music. We actually have dramatic action going on and we have scenery. So David, a, a couple of thoughts about the key uh, ways that you, you and Laura, your wife, uh, and others approached bringing the visual parts together. I think the interesting part in discussing some of this and having done the Jazz Passion several times now is I think it's becoming clearer to both of us that the work can be done staged or without staging. And that in many ways it's interesting how well it stands on its own without major staging. Uh, having said that though, I think the staging can add a dimension for people that's helpful. The initial set of uh, ideas uh, with the ladders uh, as opposed to three crucifixes or crosses um, came basically out of my warped mind from, you know, our town. They go up and down the ladders all the time and I thought, well, what are we going to do? And, and uh, to put crosses up there just seemed to me to be a little too much. Mm -hmm. And then everybody hangs Christ on a cross. What, what are you going to do? Rope them and then you got to get them up there. And it, mm -hmm. it was a whole technical set of problems. I thought the ladders would be interesting. Uh, not everybody shared that opinion. <laughs> and then, you know, what are we going to do with it for the resurrection part? And uh, well, we'll, we'll flip it upside down and make a, a V for uh, victory. Uh, Vivit, Christ lives. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that, that has worked pretty well. Of course, you have to find antique ladders that are not trapezoidal, but are made in the shape of a V, which we did. And Andy's had them restored a couple times now. So that piece worked well, along with then some of the original staging came from pictures uh, taken in the Holy Land, in Israel and the Palestinian desert and those kinds of places. Uh, the columns uh, come from one of the historic sites outside of Jerusalem. And that was done just to give it a little framework. Mm -hmm. uh, the costuming again was done to, again, add interest. Uh, the lighting effects, the same thing with lights flashing at some points, other points, very little light. Uh, the fog machines uh, creating some effects, um, particularly the dusty and the dirty wilderness. Uh, so all those things can be done. Uh, we've done it with just the picture background. Uh, again, scenes from the Holy Land to set the stage uh, with costuming, but limited. Uh, and I, I do think that it also uh, could stand on its own apart from any of that. Uh, so I think it's a very flexible piece, again, that adapts itself to uh, extensive staging, um, limited staging, uh, or no staging at all. Um, and, you know, things we did... Uh, at the Wentz Auditorium were different than we did in the Chancel of St. Luke Church uh, as opposed to other places. And I think that speaks well for the piece and again its adaptability uh, along with uh, what you do with the performance and how they have to shift a little bit in these different venues. You mentioned uh, having pictures. Could you just describe what that actually is in terms of when you don't have the props? Uh, how has Laura created some background? Uh, well, the backgrounds, again, they come from the Holy Land, Gethsemane, um, the Roman court uh, outside of uh, Jerusalem, I forget which site it is, uh, but where there were pillars and columns to give you that. Uh, again, uh, the Garden of the Resurrection. Uh, so all of those were pictures that then were photographed. Uh, uh, the Judean desert, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, has absolutely no vegetation. <laughs> uh, and uh, then putting them up to try and again uh, provide a little easier way for people to do this uh, because one of the if you take it on the road uh, you know you, you're not going to pack up a semi truck with with uh, uh, costumes and props right uh, and then the rest of it was you know the, the the bowl for the washing of the feet and that sort of thing uh, those were in there again to illuminate the story but also make it kind of fun uh, you know, everybody likes to wave a towel around, and, and they do that for rub-a-dub-dub. -dub. Right. Uh, so those kinds of things, and then a lot of light at the end, uh, and, and again, as much as we can throw on it to, to give you the sense of resurrection. Right. And the pictures 
when we use the pictures, those are actually projected yes. onto the background uh, using you know traditional LED projector right, yeah, technology. Yeah, projector so or, you can just bring or a projector from, from and behind. suddenly have the scene projected right. into the background. That's it's much more. And that's synced with the text and music. Right. Okay. So anything else? Anybody else wants to cover? Well, I think the visual part is very important. The music stands by itself, like you said. But I think people, and you know, now that television is so big and and the um, multimedia shows that have a screen, people like to watch something. Mm -hmm. So this gives them another complete visual, um, you know, experience as well as audio because attention spans a lot of times aren't very long. That's why you have to wake up in there. <laughs> wake up! <laughs> okay. So thank you very much for your interest in this project. We're very excited that we've been able to talk about some of the things that we found interesting as we created this music and this set of texts. We are hoping that you can apply these learnings as you're working on your own creations in jazz and the church. And we also hope it inspires you to perhaps perform this work in your own church or at your own college. Thank you very much. Hallelujah.